Good afternoon, everyone, and please be seated. Welcome, students, alumni, family, friends, and faculty to Johns Hopkins Carey Business School Spring Graduation. I'm Gokhar Aydan, Professor and Vice Dean for Faculty and Research at Kerry Business School and Chief, Chief Marshal for our ceremony. Thank you to our student marshal, Dolly Michira, for leading our procession. We are delighted you are joining us for this momentous celebration of our graduates. Before we start, I want to remind our graduates and guests to, remind, to remain in their seats until our ceremony is complete. Now, it is my honor to introduce Alexander Triantis, Dean of the Johns Hopkins Carey Business School. He will preside over today's graduation ceremony. Please welcome Dean Triantis. Well, hello and welcome students, family, and friends. Welcome to our esteemed faculty and honored guests. Dr. Gabe Kellen from the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, Claudia DiCarlo from the Johns Hopkins Alumni Association, and our keynote speaker, Jenny Morgan. I'm Dean Alex Trianis, and it is my privilege to preside over our spring commencement. Congratulations to our graduates on one of the most valuable and meaningful accomplishments of your lives. As we celebrate your achievement, let us also recognize and thank those loved ones, teachers, and friends who guided you, supported you, and inspired you throughout your lives and careers. Today marks the end of a significant chapter in your lives and the beginning of a new and exciting journey. You have achieved a significant milestone in your lives by completing your education, and I congratulate you all on this fantastic achievement. As you move on to the next phase of your life, I would like to talk to you about the future." End quote. Guess where that came from? ChatGPT. So, what do you think? I wanted to include a passage from this uh, latest AI marvel to make a point about our future and where we're heading. The world is changing. We live in a time of rapid technological advancement. What's cutting edge today will be replaced by something wondrous tomorrow, whether it's a better speech writing AI, self-driving cars, miraculous medical treatments, or some other technology that we can only imagine. These advances have the potential to reshape our lives and the way we conduct business. And they always come with a promise of making our lives easier and more efficient. As Cary graduates, you've acquired the analytic tools and the critical thinking skills to navigate this ever-changing world and to harness the technological advances ahead. But as we look at that landscape, and even as we embrace the digital advances that make our impact possible, I encourage you to seize this future with something even more powerful, unwavering humanity. It is perhaps our most cherished carry value. Commit to business with humanity in mind and to building a better society. When Steve Jobs, the late founder of Apple, was asked about whether he believed technology could empower humanity, he responded, it's not a faith in technology, it's faith in people. You see, a chatbot might be able to answer your questions and point you to an automated resolution, but it will always be heart that gives our work meaning. Your analytical understandings will be critical to the next generation of business, 
but the problem you'll be solving involve real people's lives and livelihoods. And the reason we need the power to design and scale and model AI for health and automation is that those technologies may contribute to making our lives longer, healthier, or easier for someone we love. You have completed your degree because of your boundless curiosity, and you will leave here with the skills for relentless advancement. But you will want to lead and succeed because of what it means to you and to the communities you'll impact. Put your faith in people as you build for what's next. As graduates, your challenge now is to take the experience you've gained, the adaptability you've shown, and the commitment you've demonstrated to make our world a safer, healthier, and more just and equitable place for all. As you enter a new phase of your lives and careers, I have no doubt that many of you will be at the forefront of change and helping to build a tomorrow full of potential and promise. You now have a wealth of business knowledge, new skills, and memorable experiences to meet the challenges ahead. Kerry faculty and staff are sad to see you leave, but at the same time excited for your future. Please stay connected with us. We can't wait to hear of your plans and learn of your achievements. Today we confer an honor on you, and your future successes will honor us. I wish you nothing but happiness and the best of luck in your continuing journeys. Now it's my pleasure to invite Claudia DiCarlo to welcome our graduates to Johns Hopkins al Alumni Community. Claudia is Secretary of the Johns Hopkins Alumni Council and, importantly, a 2015 graduate of the Cary Business School. Claudia. Good afternoon to the newest graduating class from the Johns Hopkins Cary Business School. I am Claudia DiCarlo, Johns Hopkins Alumni Association Secretary and 2015 graduate from the Cary Business School. On behalf of the Johns Hopkins Alumni Council and the Johns Hopkins Alumni Association, I want to congratulate you on your commencement and welcome you to the Johns Hopkins Global Alumni Community, nearly 260,000 strong. I'm excited to introduce you to the next phase of your Hopkins journey. Like me, you chose Hopkins for the opportunity to flourish in a university community with a diversity of experiences. Your alumni community extends beyond the Hopkins campus to a worldwide network that celebrates this community's diversity. Whether you're a Cary Business School alum in Baltimore, a medicine grad in Boston, or a SAIS alum in Bologna. As the newest members of the Alumni Association, you'll find many opportunities to celebrate, connect, and collaborate, both virtually and in person. I encourage each of you to connect with one another on One Hop Alumni, our exclusive virtual networking platform, and through social, cultural, identity, and industry-based events designed by and for our alumni community. From school-based alumni weekends to our annual networking conferences and everything in between. Consider mentoring a student. Continue to shape your career path through Handshake or through our new Alumni Life Design Experience course launching this summer. Explore Hopkins at Home, our online source for lectures and live events. Learn more about other lifelong learning opportunities, including our Odyssey non-credit programs and our virtual book club. Follow the Alumni Association's social media accounts, become a social media ambassador, and keep your contact information updated so you'll receive the latest university and association news. Finally, consider sharing your updates with us including your stories of what Hopkins has made possible for you by using the hashtag HopkinsPossible. On a personal note, 
I have been an active member of the Alumni Association Council and have been honored to serve as a volunteer for the university in a multitude of roles. I hope you will join me and the thousands of other alumni who use these opportunities to enrich their lives, both personally and professionally. And in closing, I hope that you'll remember, wherever you go, there are Hopkins alums where you are. There are Hopkins alums doing what you do. And perhaps most importantly, there are Hopkins alums doing what you want to do next. And we're here to connect you with them and the university. And if you don't find an opportunity that interests you, we'll help you create a group that best represents you and your interests. My heartfelt congratulations once again to each and every one of you today. I hope this will be the first of many opportunities where our paths will cross. And as you go out and celebrate, remember that you are forever a part of Hopkins. Now let's get started on your alumni journey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia, for those uh, wonderful welcoming wor words uh, for our new alumni. Up next, we have two speakers representing the class of 2023. First, uh, John Alani, who is graduating today from our MBA program, <laughs> will speak on behalf of our full-time graduates. Afterwards, Heather Later, um, a graduate of the Design Leadership, a graduate of the Design Leadership Mamba program will speak on behalf of our part-time graduates. John. I love you guys. Um, thank you, Dean Triantis, um, and to our esteemed faculty, friends, family, distinguished guests, everyone I'm, I sent the live stream to. It's just an honor to be in front of you today as a student speaker representing my fellow graduates of the class of 2023. My name is John Alani. I'm the Governance, Advocacy, and Academics Chair for the full-time MBA class. We're going to do that a lot. Um, you know, I really never thought I'd be giving a speech of this size, and let alone at an MBA commencement. I wasn't even really sure that I belonged here. You see, I'm what you call a non-traditional applicant. <laughs> I was a little older. I didn't come from a typical background in consulting or finance. In fact, I never even owned a Patagonia vest <laughs> or, had, <laughs> or had a LinkedIn premium account. My career was in the fashion industry, but I always had this voice in my head telling me to do something different with my life. As grateful as I was for my career, my work didn't really align with who I felt I was or who I wanted to be. I dreamt of doing cutting edge work at the intersection of business, science, and technology. And the thing about this voice is that over time, it didn't go away. It got louder. So I couldn't keep ignoring it. And it was then that I came across an article in the Wall Street Journal. It said that the Johns Hopkins University was, and I quote, blowing up its MBA curriculum. I was intrigued. I read on to read about this newly reimagined MBA that emphasizes science, technology, and math with a separate track for healthcare, technology, and innovation. I really wanted to be part of it. I left my life and career behind with a very understanding and supportive husband in tow to follow my dream. But pursuing our dreams isn't easy. We all had to make difficult decisions to be here. We took risks, and we spend most of our time outside of our comfort zones. Following our dreams means listening to that voice inside your head and ignoring the usually louder voice that gives you a list of reasons why you can't achieve them. But what exactly is it that we're trying to achieve? As MBA students, we're taught to define metrics for success. So I wanted to know what are the metrics for success for our own lives and careers? Luckily, the great Maya Angelou already gave us this answer. She said that success is liking ourselves, 
liking what we do and liking how we do it. Dr. Angelou's framework will provide a powerful guide and tool for us for the rest of our lives. Liking ourselves means knowing ourselves and trusting that inner voice, ignoring voices of fear and doubt. Liking what we do involves aligning our actions with our passions, closing this gap between what we do and what we aspire to do. And liking how we do it is what we just did. It's actively participating in your life, not just by dreaming big, but by putting in consistent work, showing up. This is an endurance game. So as we move on from Carrie, with some uncertainty about our futures, I just want us to all make one promise to ourselves today. Let's aim to like ourselves. This is the soundtrack of year one, by the way. <laughs> like ourselves, like what we do, and like how we do it. Let's never negotiate our sense of self or integrity or take the easy road. Instead, let's pursue our dreams in a way that aligns with our values, both who we are now and who we want to be. Each one of us, and I know them very well, has a unique story of what we left behind to be here, of the risk we took, of what we were searching for. We had a vision of where and who we wanted to be, and in true carry fashion, we chose to pursue that dream relentlessly. So let's remember who we were when we first started this program. For most of us, that means it's been at least two years now of growth, overcoming challenges, and figuring out who we are and what we care about, both professionally and personally. It also means it's been at least two years of being there for each other. Through good news and bad news and interview nerves, getting what you want, not getting what you want. We spent countless hours trying to figure out econometrics, <laughs> endless group projects, and calculating pre-tax wax. For my full-time and Mamba folks, we had so much fun. There were pirate ships, and an Admiral's Cup, and Halloween parties, and cultural events. You're just laughing because you haven't been to Diwali at Cary. There were also engagements, and marriages, and babies. We formed an extended family here that will continue well beyond our years in the halls of Cary. And I believe that it's through this safe sense of community that you can hear your own voice most clearly. So my fellow graduates, as we embark on the next phase of our lives and careers, let's hold on to that inner voice. Life isn't something that happens to us. It's something that we create. So let's go out there and create one that we're proud of. It's my honor to say congratulations and thank you to my friends, my newly formed family, the class of 2023. Thank you so much, John. Good afternoon, faculty and administration, family and friends, and most of all, hello to my fellow graduates! Today, you have trusted me with the responsibility of representing our shared experience, and this is not an honor that I take lightly. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Heather Later, and today I am graduating with an MBA and an MA in design leadership. The, the MAMBA program, as we like to call it, is known for its expertise in design thinking. At its core, design thinking is a problem-solving methodology challenging the way we think through exploration and empathy. While not all of us have intensely studied design thinking, we have all experienced its phases throughout each of our degrees. The key concepts are imagining, iterating, 
experimenting, and implementing. The first, imagining. I came to business school because I imagined more for myself. I imagined my future self with broader horizons, pivoting industries, and collaborating with experts and peers with different experiences to share. At Cary, I found so many others from all over the world with similar aspirations and dreams. My acceptance letter to Johns Hopkins brought both equal parts excitement and uncertainty. I was eager to redirect my career and be challenged to become a leader who could improve business with humanity in mind. However, when my MBA journey began with a course many of you know and love, MBA math, the fear of the unknown sunk in. I questioned whether if I had what it would take to succeed on this journey I imagined for myself. Iterating. The second concept is the process by which we propel forward, reimagining again and again and again. As an example, I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that my graduate school experience has been a transformative process of constant iteration. Whether it was through case competitions, student organizations, internships, research fellowships, venture accelerator programs, just to name a few, we have embraced the moments of uncertainty and turned them into opportunities for growth. The iterative process continued through all of our interactions with each other. To me, what stands out the most is the priceless lessons we've learned about ourselves as teammates and the invaluable insights our cohorts have taught us about our unique leadership styles. We have discovered what will inspire us and what will energize us. We've reflected, refined, and changed as people based on both the teachings from our professors and each other. And we continuously evolved our leadership styles over and over. Experimenting, the third pillar of design thinking. Experimentation is about testing ourselves and pushing through our limits into these new ways of being. So I want to share a quick story with you about Budge. I met Budge earlier this year when I had the privilege of participating in a leadership expedition to Belize through the Cary Business School Center of Innovative Leadership, where we explored their small local islands. We knew we were being tested because once we arrived, we loaded up camping gear onto kayaks and stood there wondering how we were going to paddle in between islands. That's where we met Budge. During the week, we learned how Budge overcame his troubled past through a unique offer by a local fisherman and transform that opportunity into a diverse and rich life. Not only is he now an expert diver and fisherman, but he also owns a modest plot there, raising every native fruit tree and collaborating with other farmers to safely bring new produce markets to his beloved country. He impressed upon everyone he met the importance of being a forever student, embracing the journey, and leaving the world better than he found it. Budge is truly building for what's next, and he was the perfect mentor to guide us through our own personal tests and explorations. Budge's inspiring story taught us that true leadership is not about titles or status, but about naturally rising to the occasion. Here at Cary, during experimentations with our own individual mentors, we've tested our ability to adapt to change, remain curious, and be courageous. It displayed how to embrace both the paths we choose and those paths that choose us. Implementing. We've arrived at our final pillar. This is where we put our ideas into actions. We must be bold and embody our learnings as we bring our visions to life. As graduates of the Cary Business School, we carry the spirit of emergent leadership within each of us. We've dared to think wildly, embraced a culture of inclusivity, and built a community that will empower us to make a meaningful impact on the world. While this path was not easy, we are grateful for the experiences that have shaped us and for the opportunity to implement what we have learned. Design thinking is an iterative process. We do, what we do is going to continue to change throughout our careers. But as Simon Sinek said, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And what you do simply proves what you believe. It is my hope and expectation that as we go forward, we will surround ourselves with people who will challenge us to go further than we thought was possible and carry out what we believe in. Whether you got here today as a full-time or flex student, juggled a job, missed family members on the other side of the world, or balanced schoolwork with parenthood, 
We've all worked together and know what we are capable of. Our achievements will be many, not only making Carrie proud, but making our past selves proud. Those individuals who imagined we could do this and persevered to the leaders we are here today. My heart is so full to be graduating with such remarkable people, and I'm so thankful for all of you. So let's continue to celebrate with each other. Let's take Budge's lessons about leadership and curiosity as we embark on our new paths. Let's continue to imagine for the future, iterate for growth, experiment and test our abilities, and finally, implement our vision, implement our wisdom as we build for what's next. We leave here with innovative mindsets, compassionate leadership, and an unwavering commitment to making a difference. The world is waiting. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much, John and Heather, uh, for those wonderful words. Um, next, we are pleased to recognize the recipients of the Edward J. Stegman Memorial Award for Excellence in Business Scholarship. This award recognizes those graduates with the highest GPA in the full-time MBA program, the full-time MS program, and the part-time programs. Please rise what I call your name. For our full-time programs, the recipients are Kathleen Ryan, which by now you can probably figure out is a full-time MBA program. Um, Xin Yu Wu, uh, who's a Master of Science, uh, who unfortunately I believe is not here in attendance today. And for our part-time programs, the recipient is Todd Lewis Andrew, uh, from our part-time Flex uh, Master of Business Administration. Congratulations to our honorees. As an accredited member of AACSB International, Distinguished Carey Business School graduates are invited to join Beta Gamma Sigma, the International Honor Society of AACSB Accredited Business Programs. Cary Business School students in the top 20% of their class are eligible for this prestigious honor. I ask that those graduates <clears throat> who are now members of Beta Gamma Sigma to please stand so that we can recognize you with a round of applause. At commencement, the Johns Hopkins Alumni Association presents Excellence in Teaching Awards to faculty members who go above and beyond in their commitment to educating our students. Kerry Business School students choose the recipients of the, this award, and this year's honoree is Dr. Nasser Nikandish. Nasser is an assistant professor of practice in operations management and business analytics at Kerry, and this is his second time earning the Excellence in Teaching Award. His research interests include inventory management and capacity planning. His latest publication was about the use of field observations to teach process management, and it appeared in the Decision Sciences Journal of Innovative Education. This year, he has taught operations management, statistics, Python for data analysis, and simulation for business applications. He also serves as the academic program director for our master's program in business analytics and risk management. Students routinely praise Nasser's enthusiasm, his tireless effort to help them learn, the effectiveness of his course design, and the opportunities he provides to our students uh, for them to connect with practitioners. Uh, and full disclosure, they do sometimes complain about how strict he is. Uh, Nasser, please join me at the podium. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Now it is my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Ms. Jenny Morgan. Jenny is an accomplished executive with more than 30 years experience building successful growth-oriented technology companies. Currently, she is board chair of Bridgeway Benefit Technologies, LLC, and she recently retired as president and CEO of Bridgeway. Jenny spent much of her career growing and scaling healthcare IT companies. As CEO of VIPS, she grew the Baltimore-based healthcare IT company into a regional leader in the industry. The company's revenue tripled under her leadership, which led to a successful sale to WebMD. Jenny also led Basis Incorporated for more than 13 years as their company's CEO. The software company provided enterprise technology solutions to help other businesses with benefits administration. From 2001 to 2003, she was recognized in the Deloitte and Touche Technology Fast, Fast 50 <clears throat> as CEO of one of Maryland's 50 fastest growing tech companies. In 2005, she was named Ernst & Young Maryland Entrepreneur of the Year. Jenny is also a graduate of the Johns Hopkins Carey Business School and has a bachelor's degree in economics from Brandeis University. Jenny is an active member of the Dean's Advisory Council at Carey, and she has served on numerous private and public company boards, including the Baltimore branch of the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond, which she chaired from 2012 to 2014. Please join me in welcoming our speaker, Jenny Morgan. Well, thank you, Dean Triantas. Thank you very much for inviting me to address the graduating class of the Johns Hopkins Carey Business School. It's been a real great honor to talk to you guys today. A little nervous, but really great honor to talk to you all today. And to all the graduates that are here today, you should be so incredibly proud. Successfully completing your rigorous studies at the Hopkins um, Carey Business School is no small feat. Um, and I commend you for your hard work and dedication to that task. Congratulations. Very good. Well done. I, and I also want to acknowledge um, the parents and the families that are here today. You proudly support um, these graduates emotionally, financially, and in all sorts of other ways. And it's a wonderful day for everyone and a day to be truly treasured. When I was asked to provide a keynote address, the first thing I did was to research commencement speeches. And my research concluded that the likelihood that any of you will remember anything I say today to be somewhere between slim and none. <laughs> um, I was actually really encouraged by that fact because it allowed me to speak from my heart. So here I go. So like many of you, I came to Johns Hopkins because I believed a master's degree would open doors, create opportunities, and provide a foundation for a successful career in business. And that certainly was true in my case. My studies did set me up for a successful career. But maybe like many of you, I had no idea where my journey would lead me when I actually completed my studies. So when I graduated, I certainly did not know that I would become a CEO who would sex successfully lead multiple technology companies through the absolute craziest of times, okay? There was the dot-com bust, the attack on the World Trade Center, the Great Recession, and now the worldwide pandemic. These uh, experiences forged me into the business leader I am today, and the education that I received at the Carey School prepared me to face those challenges head on. Now that I am getting near the end of my business career, I can look back and see my path more clearly. So today, I just wanted to share some of the lessons learned that I had during my journey with the hopes that it'll provide you some insight and encouragement as you begin yours. 
So my first piece of advice is to be courageous, okay? To be a good leader, you need to be courageous, even if you're faking it at times, okay? Um, being courageous means, for me, making tough but informed decisions and pivoting with the changing market dynamics, world-altering events, and as the dean talked, all the technology changes going on in this world. It also means recognizing that you won't make the right decision every time. You won't. Inevitably, mistakes will be made. And when they're made, those mistakes can be your most treasured um, assets for yourself. Learning from your mistakes will not only make you a better leader, it'll actually make you a better person. Okay. So when you make a mistake, what I suggest is just forgive yourself and just move on. Okay. Second, value teamwork. Your strongest assets are the teams that surround you, including your colleagues within your business, as well as your professional networks that you employ. So the good news is collaborative leadership was a mainstay, a core value of the Cary Business School. And you learned that there's tremendous value in surrounding yourself with people with diverse viewpoints and experiences. As Confucius once said, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So seek out advice and not be afraid to admit when you need help. There is always something to learn if you listen carefully, and it might not come from the person you expect. Hmm. Lastly, I would say stay true to your personal, your personal core values. Having a set of beliefs and creating my pr proverbial North Star uh, was a real big key to my success. Okay. For me, my family was always my North Star. Raising three sons while working full-time was challenging, and there were times when balancing both were daunting. Okay. There is no reason you can't achieve your potential and have both a successful career and a family. I am so grateful that I chose to put in the hard work of balancing both, and my sons that are here today are probably also glad that I did that. As a business leader, I also believe strongly in treating your employees as the most important asset of your company. I was always very careful not to overhire because I abhorred layoffs. I felt a strong sense of duty to my employees and their families, and I wanted to avoid being in a position where layoffs were necessary. As a responsible leader, I encourage you to always treat your employees fairly and to treat them as you would like to be treated yourself. Finally, remember how you got where you are and all the people who helped you along the way. Be gracious with your time. Share the benefits of your success. Paying it forward is not only the right thing to do, it actually really feels good. I am also a wholehearted supporter of diversity in the workplace with a real passion for encouraging women in leadership. I use that word encouraging deliberately. Women make great leaders, okay? Whoa. <laughs> uh, for sure. And, and additionally, they have the soft skills and the situational awareness to make responsible decisions. What I observe is that women really need encouragement to speak up, to have the confidence to take on risks, and to appreciate the balance between the home and the office. So for you women graduates out there, all I can say is, you go, girl. <laughs> you go. <laughs> I'm actually really happy to say that the Cary Business School is leading the way in helping our future leaders, men and women alike, to realize a world where gender diversity and inclusion 
is really important in business leadership to create lasting value. The other secret I learned when I researched successful commencement speeches is to keep it short. So I'll sum up with this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. <laughs> I'm in the way for you getting those great diplomas. As you embark on your next adventure, I, I really urge you to remember the lessons that you learned here at Johns Hopkins. You've been taught the importance of innovation, collaboration, and leadership. You've been trained to solve complex problems and to think critically. And you've been instilled with a passion for excellence and an unwavering commitment to ethics and integrity. Okay. As business leaders, you have both a unique opportunity and responsibility to create a better future. You have the power to drive economic growth, create jobs, and, that, and improve the lives of people around the world. But with that great power comes great responsibility also. It's really up to you to ensure that your businesses are not just profitable, but are also sustainable, ethical, and socially responsible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember that success is not just about achieving your goals, but it's also how you get there. It's about making a positive impact on the world and leaving it a better place than you found it. Belva Davis was a pioneering broadcaster and one of the first African-American woman television journalists in the US. And she said, quote, don't be afraid of the space between your dreams and reality. I believe she wanted everyone to realize that the journey is just as important as the destination. So never stop learning and growing. Embrace those new challenges. Seek out new opportunities. And never lose your thirst for knowledge. And most important, enjoy the journey. So congratulations once again. And best of luck on your next adventure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. Thank you. Um, now it is time for us to recognize our graduates. As the graduates' names are called, they will cross the stage to be greeted by the Triantis and the academic director of their program. As a reminder to our graduates and their guests, please remain in your seats until the ceremony is complete. The first to be recognized will be those students who have earned the degree of Master of Business Administration. I also ask that you please hold your applause after individual graduates and instead applaud following the groups of graduates in each degree program. Additionally, I ask that uh, guests not approach the stage for photographs as each of the uh, graduates will have their picture taken. Will the Master of Business Administration candidates, part-time flexible format, seated in rows one and two, please rise and form a procession in the aisle to your right. Professor Kevin Frick, please come to the podium to announce graduates. I invite Professor Supriya Munshaw to join us on the stage representing the faculty of the Master of Business Administration program. And the graduates who will be awarded the degree Master of Business Administration, flexible format, can come forward as their names are called. Andrew Michael Bentley Kellen. And Andrew will be joined by his father, Dr. Gabor Kellen, professor and chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine at Johns Hopkins University. <laughs> Heather Later. Paul McDermott. Erica Liptrap. Azita Zaram.
Lara Chen. Jennifer Schmidt. Vivian Obi. Shalina Kareem. Enya Paulette Pla. David Maine. Kelly Wu. Adea Diana Carmia Queen. Nicole Washera Duguna. Akila Walton. Lavanya Reka Badarla. Elizabeth Aronson. Anisha Patel. Anne Guadalcover. Nancy Sian. Grace Kibue Sharp. Monique Ricketts. Asia Muhammad. Isaac Bagayoko. Zoe Brown Galbraith. Mark William Alcher. Taylor Deani. Sean Victoria Waters. Marie Therese Uras Hidalgo. Colleen Marie McDevitt. Allison Rains. Catherine McCone. Mamadou Alihu Jalu. Timothy Huber. Michaela Johns. Morgan Ann Madison Baker. Curry Woods. Gabrielle Gard. Jennifer Carmen. Miriam Busafia. Nicole Ferris. Ashley Diana Seymour. Laura Honald Kimball. Nusheen Yayavi Firoz Abadi. Puya Tasili Fahudin. Saida Wright.
Matthew Broadwater. Michelle Azar. Seaton Pariser. Karen Frith. Joanna Ortega Ortiz. Harrison Win Chow. Jessica Brill. Lawrence Washington. Celeste Harrison. Athena Fu. Sakshi Mathur. Lisa Hung. Melissa Hartzell Galileo. Noah Stevenson. Manish Kumar. Jessica Suzanne Figueroa. Alexandra Elizabeth Reck. Casey McClarty. Judah Adam Gross. Neil Eric Watlington. Kate Sully Saeed. Jin Sil Kim. Pearl Tiratananan. Ishan Watothanthri. Megan Ray. Aquia Asiyama Abogji. Pamela Maria Trickett. Dustin Schrader. Morgan Jensen. Aftab Ahmed. Waylim Nguyen. Pankaj Kailas Jagdal. Sminil Nilkanth Mahashan. Evan David Lurie. Matthew Thomas Kaufman. Daniel Patrick Byrne. Christopher Hardenberg. Seth Lewis Newman. Nina Vanyo. Dolly Kapoor. Rebecca Kovach. Raina Cadival. Avni Gupta. Alice Lowy.
Courtney McKeon. Austin Villalobos. Jason Lee Sutterly. Sequence Saki. Jennifer Lee Meany. Jack Loss. Ashley Jane Collinsworth. Maria Diana Dimitrascu. Peter Pham. Timothy Aditama Rusli. Matthew Donahue. Iris Kao. Persia Jennings. Angela Nand. Mariah Yasmia Diaz. Nicole Weissman. Michael Grohaki. Amanda Fazakerly. Gina Bricado. Jacqueline Gamper. Runal Aras. Adeline Krieger. Margaret Carey Van Dusen. Khan Key. Natasha Frey. Laura Evelyn Flynn. Tom Fallon. Jamie Lee. Angela Carroll. Sean Terrence Smith Molden. Srithar Rao. Daniel Christopher Ramos. Sonia Nelson. Alexander Edward Glazer. Nathaniel Joseph Alera. Sarah Jean Morley. Dan Nguyen Cao. Jillian Moser. John Jones. Eva Hinton Hartman. Woo! 
Andrew Joseph Gurgle. Mallory Chasper. Ashley Ramirez. Emmy Norville Park. Anuja Janalagata. Olivia Grace Witherite. Nicole Kimberly Yenser. Sandra Garcia. Amir Shafiq. Kevin Ruth. Jacob Rosenblatt. Ashan Sainaranta. Mark Strickland. Christopher Malin. Lauren Green. <laughs> Luis Campadonico. Richard Francis. Viral Desai. Andrew Yule. Christopher Demise. Christina Sergeevna Belkova. Cameron Marie Rangecroft. Hanchi Wang. Robert Andrew Rickley. Casey Gallagher. Kelly Marie Shannon. Catherine Patton. Christopher Thomas Barr. Zachary Lee Thornton. Daniel Ruben Sines. Nicholas Anthony Skizas. Dexter Tribato. Corey Michael Hopfer. Paige Elizabeth Holmes Wilson. Daniel Gomez. Sabrina Somar. Maya Schoonmaker Arnold. Jornay McMillan. Katia Fortune. Andrew Capuano.
Richard Charles Pisano III. Alexander B. Pabst. Lai Tim Sham. Jamila Aberdeen. Caitlin Ann Corbin. Emma Savic. Monique Sandra Dyson. Madeline Miller. Arthur Tagane. Jeremy Curtis. Justin Baku. Austin Bovenzi. Wendon Twin Marina Borden. Jonathan Harry Atman. Vladimir Popov. Amanda May Doc Mortarana. Erin Elizabeth Eliason. Andrew Mukata. Autumn Renee Cadogan. Jonathan Matthew Ferber. And now I would like to invite Professor Stacy Lee, representing the faculty of Master of Business Administration degree in the full-time format, to join us on the stage. And the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Business Administration in the full-time format, come forward as your names are called. Asmita Deb. <laughs> Natasha Lauren Porch. <laughs> Marcus Ertel. <laughs> Indra Wayudi Uwen. Ahmed Almor. Manuel Antonio Soler Suarez Sr. Simone Cacharo. Tree Suwanto. Beltran Nyan Hao To. <laughs> Catherine De Natale. <laughs> Caitlin Hildreth. <laughs> Dhruv Kacker. Elizabeth Ali Barchak. <laughs> Emily Pung. <laughs> e.
Eva Penar. Mehek Kohli. Arbaz Hashmi. Ihab El Hajj. Busola Fardojitsimo. Kayla Francois. Matthew Reeds. Crystal Allen. Brittany Gardner. Louise Jordan. Francis Amifuna. William Jesse Grady. Noreen Khan. Dolly Matira. John Ilani. Joseph Heidel. Liana Silverberg. Alexa Pavlik. Valerie Bright. David Galbraith. Aditya Parthasarathi. Monica Casanova. Sarti Manchanda. Maisie Grace Lewis. Yidnakachu Kinerma Mogasi. Anito Chinamir. Daphne Lu. Chadima Akaro Aziolo. Rachel Amy Larson. Kathleen Elizabeth Bryan. Lizeth Anahi Hernandez Rubio. Shreya Bise. Lara Amelia Riley. Igor Austin Martins. Dimitro Kachenko. Alessandro Coro. Jung Lee.
Graham Andrew Zolkowski. Lydia Macrioniti. Irina Sianova. Askar Kabalayev. Olan Rewaju Ogongbe. Ananta Ranga Permana Stockhorst. Shema Muhammad Al Faidi Al Hanji. Abdul Basith. Jiang Yan. Ankit Yadav. June Park. Samuel Honiger. Catherine Hui Wen Dong. Andrea Miller. Oleg Russo. Sujia Wang. Arafat Kabir. Chianpin Wang. Yu Chan Tran To <laughs> Siling Chang <laughs> Trisala K C Katri On behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Business Administration graduates. Now I would like to invite Professor Nasser Nakandish, representing the faculty of the Master of Science in Business Analytics and Risk Management degree, to join us on stage. And the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Science in Business Analytics and Risk Management, please come forward as your names are read. Oladapur Ajayi. <laughs> Katarina Lillian Matovic. Jake Chadro. Zhong Yi Duan. Shuran Wen. Zishuan Ma. Zhao Qing Liu. Huilin Feng. And on behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Science Business Analytics and Risk Management graduates. Now I would like to invite Professor Xian Sun, representing the faculty of the Master of Science in Finance degree, to join us on stage. And the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Science in Finance, please come forward as your names are read. Candice Amina Queen. Oh. 
Jason Robert Hawkins. Pamela Raisa N. Sabgu. Yawen Chung. Wenchi Yang. Shweta Despande. Yue Xing. Suchi Chang. Yanan He. Zhong Yu Tuan. Jing Chuan Yang. Yuan Shu. Jesus Ortiz. Alina Baranova. Vitali Capitan. David Jinjay Kim. Timothy Kim. Matthew Ferrioli. Oscar Hernandez Tejada. Ruskar Sonmez. Victor Joseph Melfa III. Cassara Kiefer. Jiangwan Choi. Rexford Michael Amadou. Donovan Michael Grace. Christopher Manin. Alexander Thule. Audrey Caroline Takia. Christopher Teej. Youssef Afifi. Haiwan Li. Jun He Hong. Ross Thomas Taylor. Fernand Perez. B. Pung. Zheng Jie Shen. Bianca Sandico. Matthew Sanders. Ke Yi Chen. Yi Yang Liu. Wenjia Lu. Isaac Lee.
Xiaoyan Xie. And on behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Science and Finance graduates. Next, I would like to invite Professor Emilia Simeonova, representing the faculty of the Master of Science in Healthcare Management degree, to join us on stage. And the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Science in Healthcare Management, please come forward as your names are read. Min Chan. Oluwatoni Adepoju. Johanna Homan. Young Ki Quag. Mavish Feroz. Itenish Adderley Cooper. Gabrielle Gelfin. Jamie Garming Tse. Victoria Muliawan. Candace Parker. Kenishia Martin. Nezreen Hijazi. Bella Nelkin Paperno. Mavis Egan Ansa. Vanessa Milo Delgado. Carolyn Annika Nave. Kate Libet. Rihanna Williams. Helena Solomon. Betania Tedes. Pavashe Jamali. Gilbert Anthony Avizu. Diana Josephine Ermusura Padua Do. Andrew Caruso. Claire Logue. Peter Bigler. Nigos Fantastico. Ota Miles. Dana Gidwani. Sun Min Cho. Kyla Wiles Berry. John Robert Peraz. Christy Rose Nguyen. Farshad Madani. 
And on behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Science in Healthcare Management graduates. Next, I would like to invite Professor Meng Ju, representing the faculty of the Master of Science in Marketing degree, to join us on stage. And the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Science in Marketing, please come forward as your names are read. Karina Gulati. <laughs> Meredith Dunning. Taylor Megan Stathopoulos. Chelsea Delgado. Nalini Adele Pinto. Tejasi Sharma. Nagam Helmi. Eric Lloyd Jones II. Jacqueline Amanda Aguirre. Nia Mariso. Caroline Grace Rogers. Brianne Lily Warden. Anatoly Mikityak. Melvin S. Yates III. And on behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Science in Marketing graduates. Let us also have a, a round of applause for Professor Kevin Frick for reading the names of our graduates. Our ceremony today is nearly over. Before we go, I would like to welcome our graduating class into the family of alumni of the Johns Hopkins Carey Business School. You are our school's most valued ambassadors, and we look forward to your continued involvement with the Carey School as alumni. Thank you, for everyone. Thank you to everyone for attending today's ceremony and for everyone involved in making our event a truly wonderful celebration. Thank you, Chief Marshall Iden. Congratulations on successfully leading our graduation for the first time as our new Vice Dean for Faculty and Research. And congratulations to all of you, our graduates. Very well done once again. Thank you to the families and friends for being here with us today and to everyone watching our live stream. I would also like to thank our faculty and staff who worked so hard in putting together our ceremony and for making this a truly special occasion. Guests, if you will please remain at your seats until all faculty and graduates have left the auditorium. Will the faculty and honored guests with me on stage please rise for our procession. <laughs> 